Um, okay. Um, so new, um, not new, um, the con this leadership thing this past weekend was absolutely amazing. Um, and I cannot say enough about how just being there and being, you know, one of 55 coaches that, you know, was invited to be at this leadership, you know, as part of the number one team in the company was like such an honor and reward and blessing and all of that stuff. Um, am I frozen? Did I just freeze? Um, so that just, that was huge. Like for me personally, um, to be able to attend these retreats, um, are just, it's so incredible just to be surrounded by the other stellar leadership that is involved in the company. Um, especially coming directly from, you know, the person who obviously knows it best because she's been, um, I'm going to meet you Kelly, if you don't mind. Um, who's, you know, who's been doing this for six years and has been the top coach three years in a row for a reason. She obviously knows what she's doing and the systems that she has in place and that she translates through her downline um, work. And that's something that I, that I wanted to take away and share this weekend is that there is no secret. There was no secret that anybody shared this weekend that was like, aha, like that's what the secret is. That's what they've been doing. Um, it's been consistent same kind of actions that have worked. And obviously, you know, as social media changes and evolves, there's some things that we do to tweak along the way. Um, but everything has stayed the same. Conversations, showing up, um, being consistent, continuing to run accountability groups to help people with their goals, and, um, and kind of just adapting to the changes along the way. Um, so my biggest takeaway from this weekend was that it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to, the wheel doesn't have to be reinvented. There doesn't, there aren't any new fancy strategies that are, you know, everybody's saying, oh my gosh, you have to, you know, stand on your head for 10 minutes before you send invites and that's totally going to work. You know, like there's nothing about it that has totally changed and there's no one coach in particular that has made you know, any different strides. It's just being real and being authentic and being yourself and, um, and just continuing with that consistency every step of the way. Um, I will say that we had some great trainings from, um, not only just some of the other leaders there, but we had some really great corporate trainings too. And if you're not familiar with Kim Carver, he is an amazing, amazing beach body leadership guru like he he's always in the beach body champions page he just did a video in there the other day talking about clean leaf that just launched um and he just always every single retreat i've been to that he's spoken at it like i'm in tears i have chills i'm crying like he's just amazing so um so anyway he um is just he's he's wonderful he gave us this really amazing talk and I wanted to touch on this a little bit tonight. Um, that is so very important about personal, like about parenting yourself, about self leadership, self discipline. Um, and he talked about three things that I want to share. Um, and about how important it is not only, you know, just for myself as like, you know, kind of a, a leader of this team. Um, but for those of us who are starting our own teams, starting our own journeys, kind of building a business, um, and how important it is to just continue to build that independence and continue to build a team culture that is strong and proud and, um, and know that you do have to make sacrifices along the way. And one of the biggest reasons for um, making those sacrifices is our why. Why am I here? What am I doing? You know, I'm just bumbling around, posting things on social media. I don't really know why. Um, hopefully, you know, some people will join me. Maybe I'll make some money. Um, but he really got into, um, and I know Michaela has a little bit from a different talk that he did um, that I didn't get to attend um, about leveraging your why and, and building a strong why. But he went, he went straight to that at the beginning and went straight to um, having to like sit down and figure out why you're here and it's okay if your why has changed and evolved 
Um, and it's okay if you started this business because like I wanted to lose a couple pounds and I wanted to feel good in my skin and I wanted to feel confident and I wanted to pay for my Shakeology and I wanted to pay for my groceries and now I want to pay for my car payment and my mortgage payment and I want to put money away and I want to take trips and I want to put 50 grand in the bank. You know, it's okay if that why continues to evolve and it's okay if there's um, a monetary attachment to it. It doesn't have to be like, I want to help all the people in the world. Like it's okay that you're building a business and want part of that to be a, a financial benefit. Um, you know, I know like we are in this business to help other people, but knowing that what you're doing is not only making an impact, but it's taking your time. It's costing you time. So it should cost somebody money when it's costing you time. And to be able to just, you know, we do free groups for a reason. And I had somebody comment, I did a post today about doing a free group. And I had somebody comment, why in the world would you do this for free? And first I deleted her comment because I don't need, I don't know if it was negative or whatever it was. I don't, but I sent her a private message and I told her exactly why I would do this for free. It's to help more people who don't have the resources to whatever. Um, or it's to try to reach more people who aren't really sure if this is something that they want to do or not and kind of just give them a taste and see if it is, if we would be a good fit together, if my challenge groups would be a good fit for them. Um, and I sent her a message and she saw my message and she's yet to respond. Um, but you know, there's, there's a portion of what we can do as kind of a, a perk and a bonus for people and to attract more people to this opportunity and to challenge groups and stuff like that. But if it's costing you time, it should cost somebody else money. And it's okay to say, I'm sorry, my challenge groups are reserved for people that have completely invested in their health and fitness. And I would love to let you in, but it wouldn't be fair to my other challengers. So I have a free group that I'm going to be running next month. I'd be happy to put you on the list for that. Or, you know, I'm more than happy to add you to a, you know, a, a group text or a, you know, long-term group or whatever, where I can check in with you regularly. Um, and that's even for people, I've been starting to do that with my customers who just signed up for Beachbody On Demand. I'm not doing a challenge group for you right now that just has Beachbody On Demand, but I'm willing to check in with you once a week and see how you're doing with your workouts and see if there's anything I can help you with. Um, and when you're ready to financially commit to a challenge group, I would love to have you and give you all the benefits that I give my other people that have financially invested. And people need to know it is a business and you are working a business and where I would love to do this for free, this is my time. And, um, <clears throat> and I think the more that we are serious like that, the more that people will, will view it and understand the benefit. And you know what, if people aren't willing to financially invest, that's their own problem. That's not our problem. And that's an excuse of theirs. And we can't let it bother us because they need to know that this is not something that, I mean, they can't expect to walk into a gym and meet with a personal trainer for an hour and a half and not pay for that service. So why would they expect it from us? So, um, so going back to what Kim said, number one, um, is lead yourself first object. Uh, you need an objective as to what is going to move you in the right direction. So setting that strong, why, if you're not setting goals for yourself, it's not going to work. So if you're not setting regular goals and like me at the beginning of the year, I set my year long, like vision board goals that my goal was, um, this income every week, this rank, this, um, you know, we had, I wanted to go to Disney this year. I wanted to do this. I want, you know, little things like that, that I set goals for at the beginning of the year and then continuing to set them every step of the way as you go. Um, and they have to be your own personal goals. They can't be like, well, I want to get, um, I want to get to diamond. Why? Well, my upline told me to get to diamond. Okay. But like, really, why is it like, is rank something that's important to you? Is recognition something that's important to you? Um, is income something that's important to you? Um, is volume something that's important to you? Um, but knowing that the goals that you're setting for yourself, and like for me, I knew that I needed to challenge myself. Like diamond was a goal for me because I knew that if I didn't set that goal, then I was just going to kind of keep doing like, the minimum stuff. And I knew that I needed to kind of push myself to get to that next level because it not only would elevate my leadership, but would, it would elevate my work ethic a little bit too. Um, so I personally set rank goals because it challenges me to get to the next level 
as a, as a leader and with my work ethic. Otherwise I would just be like, meh, like all whatever, you know? So, um, stay disciplined, be completely committed to your outline. Um, and this is all in number one, the lead yourself first thing. Um, and just, he just said, when you, when you slack, when you lax, you lose trust in yourself. It erodes self-confidence and it erodes your self-esteem as well. So, you know, building that confidence, sticking to your plan, saying, you know what, whatever it takes kind of thing and say, I'm, I'm going to fail along the way. I may not hit my goal in the time frame that I set for it, but knowing that I'm pushing myself to do it and I'm challenging myself to do the things that I need to do every day, that's going to get me there. Um, number two was the discipline to control the controllable. And I talked about that in my post this morning about how there's so many things we can't control. We can't control you know, when we send somebody the link to enroll and then they never enroll, we can't control that they never enrolled. We can know that we did everything that we needed to do the right way to get them to that point. We can't control when our challengers don't show up in our challenge groups or they say, I'm all in a hundred percent. Yes. Sign me up. And then crickets. Like I have a girl who was all in last month and she literally posted two workouts in the challenge group app and she has yet to message me back again. And she still likes my posts on social media and comments on my stuff, but she has not responded to anything that I've asked her about a challenge group. And there's nothing that I did wrong. And it drives me crazy because I'm like, oh my gosh, what? You know, and she was all in and ready. Obviously not. Um, so, you know, things that you can control, things that I need to be doing my invites, my conversations, my friend requests, that kind of business building stuff, um, my daily actions for growth, my personal development, my mindset, my confidence, my um, attitude, my response, um, the things that I do no matter what, and the things you can't control, like you literally cannot control them. You have to bless and release, let them go and say, you know what, like, oh well, I can't do anything about that, I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, when you have a coach that is, um, you know, a new coach and they are excited about joining the team and working the team or, you know, working their business. And then you put them in a new coach training and they never, ever do anything at all. And you're like, what, what? Like, and then you question your leadership and then you question yourself. And then same thing in a challenge group, you question, am I doing this the right way? Like, why is, you know, and that's what's hard about a leader, um, is that you, we question ourselves because you know, we, we question, are we not leading the right way? Are we not doing something right? But, but it, it's not, it doesn't, that we can't control it. That's what Kim was saying. Like, you know, some of those things, that's what's hard about it is that it's, you want to be able to control it and you want to try to fix it. But unfortunately we can't. Um, number three, um, the discipline to be fully accountable. Um, <clears throat> turning your good intentions into good decisions, turning your intentions into good habits. Accountability forces us down a continued path to where we do those disciplines daily. So knowing that, um, you know, again, with the daily disciplines, and that's one consistent thing that I heard from every single person this weekend was, I have to do this business. I have to work this business like I'm showing up for myself every day and, and not necessarily every day. Like we talked to, um, Jen Guthrie did a little talk and if you know who she is, um, she's a, she's like a, just rocking her business right now. And she does on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, she does her invites. And on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, she does her follow-ups. So she doesn't technically invite to the business every day, but she spends the morning, you know, sending 25 messages on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the other day she sends follow-ups and she just tries to catch up. And, and so like for me, that just seems so simple. Like that's not something that I do because I try to invite every day and I'm like, ah, oh, I wonder what would happen if I tried to break my schedule down a little bit or I made it a little bit easier on myself or I said, you know what, I'm really going to focus on team stuff on Tuesdays and Thursdays and I'm really going to focus on my personal business the other few days, you know, and then give yourself some downtime. Know that like the weekend, you shouldn't be busting your balls all weekend long working your business. You, I mean, unless you want to, um, but give yourself downtime and give yourself time in your schedule 
that says like, I'm going to work my business these times, set a timer and then be done with it and say, you know what? I did everything that I can do in that time crunch. I did the things that I had set out to do. I was intentional. I was driven. I was purposeful and, and I did what I needed to do. And you know what? Like tomorrow's a new day. And if there's things that you have to carry over to the next day, do it. But you cannot drive yourself into the ground. And Kelly, you know, I'm not just talking to you. Like I'm talking to anybody that's listening to the reporting. You're like, geez. Um, but, you know, driving yourself into the ground and, and running yourself ragged. And, and that's how burnout happens is when we are sitting at our desk all day long or sitting at our computer or doing the same thing, you know, and like just feeling like you're spinning your wheels and you're not getting anywhere. Um, so you have to be willing to, you know, switch some things up, try some different things, do the things that work for you and know that what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you or the next person or vice versa. Um, and then Kim said his little bonus tip was at the very end of the day, take five minutes to yourself, 30 seconds. And he said, you know, if you have to, you know, get in the car and drive down the street so you have five minutes of peace and quiet, do that. Um, but clear your mind, no emotion, deep breaths, and ask yourself one question. Did I win the day in terms of my business? Did I do the things that I need to do to grow my business? Did I do the things that I need to do to grow myself personally and be the best version of myself? Did I do those things first? And what kind of priority did I make for myself, my business, you know, my habits, the things that I personally make a priority of. Um, and if not, how did it get away from me? Um, and then don't be willing to, or be, don't be afraid to have a success partner, accountability buddy, you know, or your coach or whoever that you can say, listen, like I'm seriously struggling with committing to these simple things that I need to do every day, or I'm seriously struggling with getting distracted, or I'm struggling with a time crunch, or I'm not really sure that I'm doing the right thing that I need to be doing. Um, and then just asking for that help with accountability along the way. I have to do that from time to time more than I'd like to admit, where I have to call my upline and say, listen, like, I feel like this should be happening, but instead this is happening. And I don't really know how to balance this or change this. And, um, and sometimes just an outside like observer can say, why don't you try this? This might be so much easier. And that's kind of like that Jen Guthrie thing. And I'm like, why don't I stop stressing out about having to get out 25 invites every day or 10 invites every morning? And why don't I try to knock out, you know, 20 in 30 minutes on a Monday when I'm a little bit more balanced or when my kids are at school, I only do my invites on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because I know I'm not going to be interrupted by children running in and screaming. Um, or, you know, even scheduling posts and challenge groups and, you know, doing little things like that, that just seem to make more sense and aren't, and aren't bogging us down. Um, and he just said, you know, these are the things you need to do that are going to help you reach your goal. The next step obviously is accountability. Um, knowing the reason behind why you're doing this, knowing your why. And, and, you know, we talk about a why that makes you cry, um, and finding that powerful reason, you know, and I think about that personally myself, I never like, had a goal to find a business I could do from home and stay home with my kids. But when I started to work this business and see the benefits a little bit more and be home with my kids, I kind of just decided that I didn't want to be anywhere else. And it was not this big, crazy dream of mine to work from home and stay home. When I worked full time, I was like, Oh my God, how do you stay at home? Moms do it. I'm going crazy whenever I have, you know, a sick kid or I have to stay home or like, I never wanted to be a stay at home mom when I worked full time as a nurse. And now like things have changed a little bit. And I attribute that to this business. Um, know that, and that's like totally fine. If that's not your goal, anybody that's listening to the call, like, I'm not saying that your goal in this business has to be like, I want to be a stay at home mom, or I want to never work again. Um, I went to an hour of a CPR class tonight, funny story, because I actually was taking the wrong class. And in an hour in, I realized I'm not supposed to be in this class. I need to go. Um, so in this class tonight, um, I just realized how much I love like hands-on nursing. And I'm like, that's probably something that I'm going to look into maybe getting back into sometime soon, but not full time. Um, but you know, it's funny how we start to do things and we kind of realize like where, we want to be or how that shifts our why and how that shifts our goals. Um, 
No chasing, he said. There is a difference between supporting and chasing. Um, in your, in your, in their mind, you don't want to build that dependency. So like for me, I am terrible at doing my challenge group check-ins like late at night or following up with messages throughout the day. And, um, and he said that just gives your, your coaches, your team, your client, your clients, challengers, whoever else, the, the notion that you're going to be there at their beck and call all the time. So, you know, whenever you set that expectation that, you know what, as soon as you send me a message, I'm going to respond to it right away. That's the kind of behavior that you're training your people to see is that, you know what, I'm just, you know, Ashley's always answering messages all day long. Um, even if I am, or if I'm not or whatever, but he said setting some boundaries and then not going after those people that aren't checking in. Um, of course, you know, following up with people, but not the continuous stuff because he said then it sets that expectation that you're always going to be there. And sometimes it's okay for our people to need us and to miss us and to know that like, you know, hey, I'm still going to be here for you, but I'm not going to come hunt you down and make sure you're drinking your shake every day. And I'm, I didn't see that you logged your workouts this week. So what's going on? You know, like he just said, of course, we're all adults. You know, we have to be accountable for our own actions and it's not our job individually to make somebody else be accountable. That's, that's our own individual jobs is to hold ourselves accountable. Um, and then he just said, all this stuff is, is really great but it only works if we decide to take action. Um, and that was one thing this weekend that probably every leader said too, was, you know, we can give you a notebook full of goodies and tools and all these amazing things to do, how to grow your business, but your business won't grow if you keep them in a notebook on paper. Um, so I have about three or four more talks that I wanted to cover um, from this weekend, but I wanted to break them all down into a series of like takeaways. And, um, and this is right where I wanted to start because I felt like it was just the most like core knowledge for, you know, kind of moving forward. Um, and, and he just really talked, we have a bunch of really good slides too that they've shared with us from some of the other talks um, Jen Guthrie was amazing on inviting and that's something that I want to dive into a little bit more and I might talk briefly about that on the call on Saturday. Um, I do have our calendar and Kelly, I'm going to kind of give you a rundown and I'll talk about, I wanted to kind of run down on the call because there's a lot of stuff on here that I wanted to just kind of clarify. Um, obviously dream team calls are on Mondays and our team calls are going to be on Saturdays. Um, I'm going to do a coach sneak peek this Sunday night. Um, <clears throat> just to recap some of my desk, uh, my Orlando stuff, um, just because I never got a chance to do one last weekend. We had kind of spotty internet and I just, it was kind of nuts. So um, all the people that I've had in my coach sneak peek, I am just going to hopefully try to connect with them on Sunday night. I figure Monday's a holiday, so it might be a really good time to do a coach sneak peek because people aren't worried about trying to get to bed early or whatever. I don't know. It could be a bust or it could be great. So, um, so I'm going to try to promote for that on Sunday, um, and a little bit this weekend and, <clears throat> and then go live in that group. Monday, I'm going to do a five day Emerald push. So anybody that wants to jump in and do, it's going to be very, very simple training from the back office and with an emphasis on, you know, either converting customers over to coaches or, um, if you're, you know, considering signing up your spouse anyway, talking about how to do that and put them in the right spot and volume and all of that stuff. Um, but it's going to be some live videos and a couple little, little things. So, um, that's something I'll post about probably tomorrow if anybody's interested. Um, and I'll put that group together and it'll be a Monday through Friday kind of thing. I am personally doing clean week on the 16th and I'm promoting it now and I'm just collecting names on in a notebook. I'm not doing anything as far as private messaging. I'm not sending a bunch of detail. I wrote a blog post about it today um, and I've posted the link and I, with a Wufu application there that people can sign up with. I'm posting, I've promoted it on my Instagram. Um, I'm going to do an ad on my like page for it. <clears throat> and I'm going back into my previous challenge groups and I'm checking in with people and talking to them. 
and then I'm going to offer them the opportunity to purchase seven days of Shakeology. Um, every single person that, that I know that's been in free groups before, I'm, I'm going to go back into all of my old free groups. I'm going to post my blog post in there. I'm going to post an application. I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to talk it up for the next week. And I'm just going to collect names. And then sometime later next week, I'm going to start sending out information. All right, this is how you enroll. This is how you join. Are you interested in doing it? And maybe I'll do it next Monday. Maybe I'll do it early next week. It kind of just depends on what my time crunch looks like. Um, probably next Tuesday when my kids are back in school, I'm going to really make sure to follow up with these people and say, this is how you enroll with a free week. If you want to try Shakeology for seven days, you can definitely do that. If you want to try it before you buy it, before you buy into my next challenge group, stuff like that. Um, talk about the benefits of Shakeology. I'm going to talk about the benefits of Shakeology and Clean Week. I'm actually going to use the challenge group guide that's in the back office for Clean Week. Um, and then I'm, I mean, I'm not going to do anything too crazy. I love the nutrition guide that they put out for clean week. I'm going to do little snippets from that. I'm going to use the meal plan that's in there, or maybe I'll post one of my easy ones. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing up until the 16th. And then clean week starts on the 16th. I'll probably do one last call on that Monday, just for anybody else that wants to jump in a free group. Um, I'm going to do a sneak peek on Wednesday, the 18th. And then after my clean week starts, I'm done talking about clean week, um, <clears throat> probably until November. And then I'm going to promote for my November group. 30 days of gratitude I had a ton of success with last year. And I did gratitude journals for every person that bought a challenge pack. So I'm going to do that again this year. And I'm going to talk about gratitude with the importance of gratitude period and then being grateful for our bodies and what they're capable of. So that's going to include fitness and nutrition in there as well, but it's not going to be a requirement. And then I'm also going to do on the app a prepare to be obsessed group that's going to continue for the rest of the year until 80 day obsession comes out in January. And I feel like that's totally overwhelming, but I think about it this way. Anybody that I've had in the past that wants to join in, we're going to work through 21 day fix. We're going to work through 21 day fix extreme, maybe some hammer and chisel stuff, but all autumn calories based workouts and let them kind of pick and choose. Um, I think she has a calendar somewhere in like, I think she has an 80 day group or a prepare to be obsessed group that she's personally running. And I think I'm going to try to dig in there and find something and then kind of follow a calendar on the app. And it's not going to be anything crazy. I'm not going to be you know, doing all kinds of crazy in brand new posts every day. It's just going to be a motivational quote or a meal plan or a work, something, whatever, generic and a place where they can check in every day and prepare for this next group. And as people join, I'm going to welcome them and shout them out in that group. This is Kelly. She's new to the group. Everybody welcome her. She's starting such and such workouts. So that way I'm going to continue to have a place to invite people. One thing we talked about this weekend is always have a place where you can invite somebody to. So I like the idea of doing an end of the year group, especially for people that had some goals that maybe they didn't meet this year and then want to squeeze them in before they have to like squeeze into a New Year's Eve dress or something like that. Um, and then, and then I'm, well, I'll wait kind of till Saturday, but our team, um, I'm going to start transitioning our team name this month over to Team Raise the Bar as opposed to Destination Fit and do a clean house um, of the people in our team that are no longer in our team and or participating. I'm not gonna just delete people, um, but I'm going to make that announcement in our team that we are revamping and starting fresh um, with some new ideas and focusing on overall team. Um, I think I made a little, yeah, I did. Um, new team name, new team culture, branding, long-term success, raise the bar, not only just as a team, like raise the bar, but like your own personal business, your own personal standards, um, your own challenge groups. And then just being a part, being, just being a team that everybody contributes. It's not my team. It's our team. Um, it's, you know, if you have input, add it, add it into the team. If something's working for you, add it, share it, you know, all those things. Um, because that's one thing this weekend too that we saw is that everybody works together and everybody supports and encourages each other. And I think we need to do a lot more of that. Not that we don't do a good job of that already. I think we do. 
But I think, you know, just being a lot more encouraging and supportive and just sharing little things and celebrating each other's victories. And when you, you know, sell a challenge pack, shout yourself out in the team page and challenge somebody else to do the same. So um, I put on the calendar a little raise the bar challenge. And that's something that I kind of wanted to do this month too, is um, challenge ourselves to just raise the bar a little bit. And if you set your goal for SC5 this month, double it and push for a higher goal. And if you set your rank for diamond by the end of the year, you know, double down and say you're going to do it by the end of the month. And if you set your goal for, you know, whatever it is, um, rank advance a couple new coaches, sign two new coaches this month, whatever, challenge yourself to raise the bar a little bit. And then, um, and everybody else on that team, uh, on our team. And then I'm, I'm going to do a new coach seven day apprenticeship, which is something that, I'm going to kind of introduce over the next week throughout our team. And that's going to be the opportunity for us to bring in people with a two week free trial. So they get to try out the workouts or they can do clean week and try out Shakeology. And then we're basically teaching them how to be a coach in one week. We're not doing like a total full on new coach training, but we're teaching them. All right, today I want you to share a recipe on Facebook. Today, I want you to post a sweaty workout selfie, like little things like that. So then they kind of can ease in. And then, and then these are also the people that we're going to say, okay, today I want you to post, hey, if I did a free seven day challenge, would you be interested in joining? And then we're going to see if anybody gets anybody. And then we're going to run a clean week for these new coaches starting whatever this day in November is. And allow them to bring in their people so they can kind of get those first victories. Cause I think it's so important. So many people are like, I want to be a coach, but I don't know what it entails. So if we can give them a look into what being a coach is all about, give them a week free trial, let them try Shakeology, see if they have any interest on their own personal Facebook page and see what kind of post and motivation they have. Then I think that's a really good place to start. And apparently that's working for some top coaches right now. And I'm willing to give it a shot. Because what I'm doing is like just me and I'm like, all right, let's talk about raising the bar. So, um, so that's the October calendar. Um, and I'll kind of break it down a little bit more Saturday morning. I'm going to be in Farina this weekend. So I don't know if my internet's going to work all that well, but, um, I wanted to kind of break it down on this call too. So in case it doesn't, then everybody can go back and re-listen to the recording. Any questions? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, and that's all I have. I'll post this in the team page too. So that way there's a spot and I'll kind of break it down a little bit in the post. Um, Kelly, are, do you have a tracker that you're using? For myself? Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you meant like for my challenge group or, um, yes, I actually just revamped it. Mm -hmm. I, um, I was doing like a weekly tracker, but I switched it back to like a monthly just because I bought a different planner and it works better in there. Um, so I print it like really small, like on um, full sheet labels and I stick it in my journal and then I just tally every day if I do it. Would you be willing to share on Saturday what you're doing that works like that's working for you? Sure. <laughs> I don't know if I can say it's working, but uh, I can hear it for sure. Um, I mean, I'm like a notebook slash like, um, what is it called? Excel spreadsheet person. And I'm trying to figure out a balance, but I feel like if we can <clears throat> like losing my voice, if we can, um, kind of just share between, um, those of us that are using some kind of a tracking system or you know, what we're doing, um, just to give some people some ideas and, um, and who knows what works for some may or may not work for others, or it might, might be something that like, you know, somebody's like, Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. Like, I totally want to do something like that. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't know. I think every little bit helps. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to, um, go cause I'm losing my voice now. Apparently I talk too much, um, <laughs> but yeah, I will, um, I'll see you Saturday. If you, um, I'm going to stop recording.